again, is really professional to have someone to hand you a paper for it. I know, right? <laughs> this is, I'm such a diva. Okay, so I'm here with Rosa and we've just watched a short film at the cafe Zifferblatt. Inventory. An evaluation of a situation. Part one of three. Things I don't have. Was there a defining moment for you growing up that made you want to be in the film industry or do you feel like it's something that you've always been drawn to when you were growing up? It's actually over my brother, so over the music thing. He got into, uh, he got to know a, a producer and right. um, he's got this project where he's interviewing people from all over the world and just following kids until they're grown up and interviewing right. them every year. And um, so he also has a film camp and okay. one year he was inviting my brother because he was expanding it into ha having a music part as well. And um, actually, I've, like the first year, I've been just working there in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> so experiencing everything from the outside, you know, and people were coming there with their scripts and their ideas and just like putting things together. They had a team there of DPs and people who helped them with like their ideas and filming it. Yeah. And um, so the first year I've been just like experiencing everything from the outside, like doing kitchen stuff. And um, the second year I was like, well, maybe just give it a go and apply. Right. And I got into camp, so I was upgraded from kitchen stuff to like film member. You've got the rooms of the camp, right? Surely yeah. you could have just been like, come on, come on, just let me in. I was kind of growing into it. Right. But, um, so I think it's just, well, it wasn't like, an, like I always knew I was going to do this, but like by seeing all these people and getting like all these, like meeting all these inspirational people and like have like talking to them and seeing the way they look at things, the way they work on their things. And this was like just, well, that, that was the moment I felt like, felt like I, I really want to do this as well. What was the first thing that you shot at the film camp? Um, the thing is, you know, like it's a camp set up for 10 days a year in summer and people apply with their scripts. So they have the ideas beforehand. Oh, okay. And then if they are chosen, they get into this camp and the first couple of days it's a lot of people coming into camp mentors and they talk with you about all the processes, about the production, about the post-production, about the pre-production, how stories are built. So you yeah. get a lot of like knowledge, yeah. just theory. And um, after the first couple of days, um, you start like working, going over your script again with these people and just may maybe adjusting some things. Okay. And then you start shooting. So you've right. always got like a couple of hours, which is why you shouldn't make your script too long because like you just have a limited amount of time. But it's just great to work with all these experienced people together because yeah. they give you like a lot of like the knowledge you don't have, but you, may you have an idea and, and you just, put everything together and get a product out of it, which is right. a film. And it's going to be screened like uh, in the end of the camp. So everyone's doing a film and everyone's seeing it and like talking about it in the end, which is a great thing. I am acrophobic, claustrophobic, and I have a phobia of wasting my time. Uh, you've literally gone from just picking up a camera to having a feature film, uh, to having a film feature at a festival internationally in less than two years and I think people that want to get into filmmaking are always kind of holding on to those films so they're making the films and don't want to release them because they feel like they're not finished do you ever get the fear that your film's not finished I always have that you know like when I write scripts it takes ages yeah. until I'm satisfied I'm just like keep on like going back and forth and like changing things and then you know like I leave it a week and then I want to change everything again yeah, yeah. you know and um, sometimes like I get to this point where I say no I'm not going to do that at all because yeah. like, I, I can't do it it's just like I can't you know, so like, you must have like scripts that are just lying around <laughs> well actually I do yeah <laughs> it's just like you know like I think it's always um, for me it's always like such an like emotional process in a way because there are so many different feelings involved because you love what you're doing and it's just kind of a you know it's 
it feels great to produce something, yeah. but at the same time, you're just so afraid it's not going to be good enough. Right. And um, you, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. And the, but the thing I think, which is the most important thing, is you sh like don't be afraid to take a risk and don't be afraid to to put a lot of yourself into it. it it's it's kind of like scary in a way. Yeah. Because you know, like it's it's something like really personal yeah, yeah, and you yeah. show it to You're everyone. You're just kind of bearing yourself to everyone and being like, this is something I've worked really hard and I'm yeah. really proud of. I but hope like if it you well. enjoy it, don't be afraid to do it. Yeah, for Because sure. it's going to be worth it in the end. Um, speaking of having a ton of scripts just lying around, I was going to ask you how you go about coming up with your ideas. Is it something that you have to work really hard on or is it something that you just wake up from a dream and you're like, that's an amazing idea. Is it something that you just have pop into your head? Well, the idea is actually, well, ideas come up pretty quickly and they don't change a lot. Yeah. But the way you want to like show it and the things you use to or think about um, to express these things, they change, they can change a lot. Sometimes um, I start writing something and it's, well, you, I mean, of course, you, you write different drafts. You have the first one and the second one. They're all a bit different. Sometimes there's a huge difference between the first one and the last one. And sometimes it's not that big. It changes. It depends on, like, sometimes you, you have a, like, straight array, quite complex idea and you know how you want to do it. And sometimes it's just like one thing and you're not even quite sure how you want to put it into something. Yeah. But like the, the main thing is actually there right from the beginning. I don't really have style. No swag. What is it that inspired you to create the film? Well, um, that's actually like quite a long story. Um, it was inspired by a trip I was allowed to do, well, able to do in um, early last year after I graduated. Um, I went to Africa in the Gambia, which is a teeny tiny state in, uh, in the Senegal. And I've been living with the people there, like with the locals. So it was really close. So I, was, I wasn't living in a hotel or staying in a hotel during the time, but really How living. How long were you there for? Uh, sadly, just two weeks, which is not enough, like, That's still at all. a really long time for a kind of a culture shock like that. Isn't it? I know, but to be honest, like, you just start to understand right. how life like works there because it's so different and two weeks it's just like because you have so many impressions and yeah everything's just like as you said it's just like such a cultural shock and it's just you can't compare it to life here but i mean you know like when you grow up here you know that like not everyone's living like we do yeah but i think it's hard to understand because we can't really picture it and um most of the time it's like people say, well, oh, I'm so sorry for them and I wish they could live the way we do. And um, I mean, yeah, when I went there, I saw like all these huge, well, differences in like the material things, the way they live, like they live in hearts, at, like if they live, have something like they live in at all or they live on the streets. They have no like electricity or maybe just a couple of like hours a day or a week. No like flowing water. So they have to walk 10 miles to just like get there to water. And um, but on the other hand, they also have like the way they live and their attitude towards life. This is something like I think we can learn a lot from them as well in this case, because you know, like people, especially in the Western, like civilization, I guess, like here, all in Europe, um, we just have the tendency to look really negatively at things. And um, that's not what they do, you know, like they get up every day happy to, <laughs> to be alive and to get the chance to live that day. And that's what they do. They celebrate it, they sing, they laugh, they dance. 
like they are so open you know you get there and like everyone's so welcoming and everyone wants to talk to you and everyone just like it's such a whole huge strong community and i think i don't feel like we have that as much anymore here because you know like everyone in, is in his own little sphere and you know like you're the center of the universe and you've got your facebook account and you've got your instagram and wow like you're the middle of the world you know and you don't have to care that much about others and sometimes i think this is the way we live you know like we don't look around like everyone's just caught in his own world and we, we forgot we we're like we just like we live in the future, we live in the past, like we long for things we don't have and the things we have we don't really care about or we don't want. And, um, but we forget about, about the things we actually have right now, you know. And I think this is actually sad and that's something we should really like learn from them. If you could tell uh, someone who had a film or had a story or had an idea uh, and wanted to put it out there, is there something that you in this position now would want to say to them? Yeah, I think like the same thing I said before, don't be afraid, put it out there. Yeah, it's it's sure. scary and it's going to like, maybe you need like, you don't like, you're not able to do it the first time and you just like back off again and say, well, maybe I just like wait a bit, but just go for it. Just go for it. it. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's a really good way to wrap up the interview. Thank you very much for you. letting me speak to you.